All right, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the parts of the eye. And the parts of the eye can be a little bit complicated, a little bit, um, a little bit overwhelming, but try to think of things in groups and how they work. So with our model of the eye, we've got, we start with the outermost layer. Another way to look at things is the fact that the eye has three layers called tunics. The outer tunic, this white part right here, it's all over this white part. This is called the sclera. The sclera is the outer part of the eye. It's very tough. It's for a muscle attachment point. Um, but now think about the eye. The eye is meant to take in light and turn it into visual impulses. So if my entire eye was this thick white covering, wouldn't work out well. So I have to have a clear window. The clear window on this model is represented by this part here. This is called the cornea. The cornea is simply a clear part of the sclera. So we've got the sclera, this white part, and its clear window called the cornea. Now the cornea is simply a window. It's letting light in. So the next thing we need to do is be able to first regulate how much light comes in. Too much is bad as well as not enough is bad. And then we have to focus the light. And now those two are specialized areas of the second layer, the second tunic, which is called the choroid coat. Now the choroid coat, if I move this around, this is gonna be mostly the vascular system. So we're gonna have lots of blood vessels and lymphatic vessels that come in here. And one of the interesting things about this is part of its design is to remove heat, kind of like a radiator, from all of the heat that's being produced by the chemical reactions of the photoreceptors in here. Remember, photoreceptors are the receptors that are gonna take light energy and turn it into neural impulses. So this choroid coat is going to have first this, this round, this circular smooth muscle. Again, it is multi-unit smooth muscle, which means it's gonna react individually, but it's reacting very quickly to the light. And this round muscle is going to have an opening in the middle of it that we call the pupil. The pupil is literally a name for nothing. So I've got my little iris. I don't know if I even mentioned the name of it. This round muscle called the iris with its opening called the pupil. So if I look into the sun, my iris is going to contract and the pupil will get smaller because I don't want a lot of light in coming in because too much can be overwhelming. Again, if you ever have a question about that, go to the beach and look at people that are trying to read their text messages on the beach and they do everything to limit the light. Um, now, if I go into a dark room and, it's, and there's very little light, my iris is going to uh, dilate. It's going to open up this pupil to allow more light in. And again, so the pupil is again, just a name for nothing. So this is gonna be basically the shades for the window. So if I look behind it, I will see that there's this little thing that hangs behind it called the lens. And the lens is exactly what you'd think it is. It is a lens. It is meant to focus the light coming in on the back wall of the eye. Now, our model has this big plastic part that is meant to represent what's called the posterior cavity. The posterior cavity is going to be where the eye is divided up at the lens. So where the lens is, the big cavity behind it's called the posterior cavity. Again, this is usually set in here so we can tag it or whatever. This is the posterior cavity. The posterior cavity is filled with a thick fluid called vitreous humor. And uh, vitreous is going to have kind of the same root as if you've ever heard of viscosity. Uh, oil, uh, engine oil is measured in its thickness, its viscosity. Um, so vitreous fluid is this thick gel-like clear fluid that's found in the posterior cavity. The anterior cavity is going to be between the lens and the cornea. Uh, this little anterior cavity is filled with watery fluid, and it is called aqueous humor. So vitreous humor and aqueous humor. Now, another thing 
uh, that you should know is that humor is the old school way of talking about body fluid. And when you get into the uh, into immunity, the lymphatic system, you will find that there is a type called uh, humoral uh, immunity, and it is where the B cells release uh, antibodies through the fluid, and that's where it comes from. Humor means body fluid. So I've got thick body fluid in the posterior cavity back here called vitreous humor. I've got watery fluid in the anterior cavity called aqueous humor. Now, the lens that's sitting here has to have the ability to change shape. I'm sorry, this thing's rocking back and forth. But it has to have the ability to change shape. So I'm going to have a set of muscles, a set of round muscle, and it's not a set of muscles. I'll have a round muscle that is going to pull on the lens to flatten it out or relax to let the uh, lens bulge out. This is called the ciliary body, all right? And it is represented by this maroon part here. The white part here that looks like it's kind of been rubbed out a little bit, these represent the ligaments that connect the ciliary body to the lens. These are called suspensatory ligaments. They're called suspensatory ligaments because they suspend the lens in its correct spot. Now, again, right now, we're not going to get into what's going on with uh, you know, uh, farsighted, nearsighted, myopic, whatever. Um, but the lens has to change shape. And kind of like in this video right now, if I put this little cursor right, or this little pointer in front, you'll see it's blurry, but you, cause it's focused in over here. Now, if I wanted to focus in on the pin, now the ciliary body and everything is going to be blurry. And that's what's going on with changing the shape of the lens is because as the light comes in here, I am trying to make an image on the back wall of the eye, of the posterior cavity. Now, I don't have, if I was to bring, and I wish actually even this little lens here, it almost works. If I take it, uh, you can find a focal point that I can make uh, picture of the lights above. So if I usually bring a magnifying glass so I can show how this works. So as the lens is sitting here, the light that's coming through gets bent and it's going to make an upside down picture on this back wall here. This back wall represents the innermost lining, the inner tunic, and it is the retina. Now the retina is going to be made up of two basic types of photoreceptors. Again, remember photoreceptors are simply uh, nerve endings that respond to light energy. And so we have what are called rods and cones. So rods and cones make up this wallpaper that we call the retina. Rods are for low light vision. They don't need a lot of light energy to send their signal, but their image is black and white and grainy. The other type are called cones. Cones need more light energy, but the, the image that they create is colored and it is sharp. And so we have this mixture, except for one area. Now our model makes it very difficult to see, but hopefully you can see right here, there's this light peach area. This is meant to be directly behind the pupil. Now, in our model, it's not set exactly right, but it would be that this area is called the fovea centralis. Now, fovea means small indentation. Fossa means big indentation. If you've gone through the skeletal system, fossas mean big indentation. Fovea means small indentation. Fovea centralis means it's the small indentation in the center of your field of view. This fovea centralis is entirely cones. So this little area, you would have a hard time producing a good image in a dark area. So the best way to notice this really is if you are out at night and you're looking at stars, if you see a dim star out of the peripheral vision and you go to look at it, it might look like it disappears because once that light from that star is hitting this little area, if it doesn't have a lot of light energy, it might not have enough to send the cone or to cause the cones to send a signal. And what gets frustrating is when you look off to the side, it appears again, and it's because that image moves over a little bit and now it can hit some of the rods and it'll send the signal. Now, 
the retina is simply a wallpaper, basically, extension of this cranial nerve. This is cranial nerve two. This is the optic nerve. It is a sensory only nerve. That means it's only sending information in. And so as it comes into this posterior cavity, it flattens out and turns into this retina, this little wallpaper, like a weird Willy Wonka thing. Instead of chocolate and all kinds of candy, it is photoreceptors. Now, the last little bit is where this comes in, there's a hollow opening. This little hollow opening where the cranial nerve comes in is where blood vessels come and go. Now, because it is this little hollow opening here, there are no photoreceptors here. So this is called the optic disc. This is a blind spot in our field of view, but our body does amazing gymnastics to make sure we don't notice it. So overall, we have three layers, right? It's like an ogre. So we have three layers here. We have an outer layer called the sclera with its clear window called the cornea. This middle layer is called the choroid coat. It is the vascular layer. It is, um, it is going to have a uh, two parts to it for the visual part. I'm gonna have the iris which is this round colored muscle with its opening called the pupil, the name for nothing. Behind it, ooh, and I took that out, is the lens, which is gonna be held in place by suspensatory ligaments that are connected to um, the ciliary body. All right, the choroid coat, the outer part, ciliary body's the muscle, suspensatory ligaments are holding on to the lens, which is behind the iris and the pupil. And then finally, the inner layer is called the retina with its rods and cones. Rods are for low light image, producing a black and white picture where cones take more light energy to send the signal, but they produce a color picture. There are three types of cones, but you'll learn that in lecture. In the retina, there is a special little area called the fovea centralis, which is this central part of my visual field, which is all cones. So it takes more light energy there, but it produces the best image. And finally, the retina is an extension of optic nerve two, which is the uh, cranial nerve two, which is the optic nerve, um, sensory only. And there is this little part of the optic nerve where it comes in, where blood vessels come and go, called the optic disc, because there are no photoreceptors there. Well, that is the overview of the eye and our eye model. I hope that that helped. Uh, the last thing, I do see this now that I forgot to mention, the posterior cavity and the anterior cavity. Posterior cavity is behind uh, the lens. That is filled with vitreous humor. The anterior cavity from the lens to the cornea is filled with aqueous or watery fluid, aqueous humor. All right, I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense and have a wonderful day.